What is up guys? Welcome back to DCS World. Welcome back aboard the Hornet for yet another tutorial video. In this one we're going to have a little bit of fun because we're going to check out the recently released full fat track while scan radar mode. Now, what does that mean? Well, if you recall from a previous video, we talked about latent track while scan and how we can develop track files for multiple targets out in front of us. Track while scan the full version of track wall scan that is enables us to actually launch weapons and build additional situational awareness on those targets. So let's look down at our radar page here. We're currently in range wall search RWS. If we press this push button here, that will switch us to TWS. Now TWS track wall scan, as the name implies, it enables us to build and maintain track files of targets out in front of us while continuing to scan the area. And we've got a bit of symbology we can look at here. We can change our bar scans as we normally would, go silent. The hits function here uh, enables us to display additional radar hits outside of the, I believe it is uh, 20 targets that it can display. So we'll see 20 half foos for targets uh, and anything outside of that. In fact, I think there's one here. If I press hits, that should disappear. It does clean up the display a little bit in really complex situations, but you'll leave this on for the most part. Raid is an option that we have that we'll talk about in a little bit, um, but it does do some battlefield expansion. We can change our range similarly to how we always could. Auto and manual. So in track wall scan, in manual track wall scan mode, the radar's azimuth sort of tries to follow our TDC on the radar screen. So if you notice, I'm moving it off to the side here. It's now scanning this portion only of my radar view. If I move the TDC over here, it's now scanning this portion. This is important because in track wall scan, in order to build a good enough track file with accurate enough data for weapons launch, the azimuth and the bar scan have to be narrowed significantly. So you notice we're in two bar 80 degree here with our similar range wall search symbology for changing the azimuth scan width. If I were to change this to a four bar scan, we're now limited to 40 degrees at four bars. If I were to go to six bar scan, we'd be limited to 20 degrees. If I go back to two bar scan, our maximum is 80 degrees. What I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna set this for a four bar 40 so that you can see how much the azimuth actually follows my TDC as I move it around. So if I go from here over to here, you know, we're moving back and forth here. And as I mentioned, the reason for this is because we need multiple radar sweeps in a very condensed area to actually build an accurate enough track file for a weapons launch. We also have an auto function here. So for example, if I were to set, let's say I want to ping this guy here, I have now set this guy as my launch and steering target. So he is my main primary target. And then if I set this guy here, similar terminology to LTWIZ. That is my launch and steering target, and then that was my DT2. And I, in fact, I think I may actually lose this guy because he's flying away from me, but that's fine. The launch and steering target is the primary target for which we could actually fire a missile on. And the DT2 is the target that is sort of in standby. So if we were to fire, and then we could switch targets using the undesignate button actually switches between the LNS and DT2. So if I press undesignate, DT2 has then become my launch and steering LNS target. And then what was previously the LNS target is now my DT2. In addition to the LNS and DT2, we can display up to eight more tracks that would be denoted by numbers one through whatever. And in fact, if I zoom out here and keep my radar scan over in this direction, we can see we've got our LNS here. One thing to point out is the LNS on the radar screen is denoted by a star. DT2 is denoted by a smaller diamond inside the bigger diamond. 
Our extra tracks here are denoted by the numbers 1, 2, and then we've got some friendly contacts out here, 3 and 4. So those are track files that the system is aware of. Now what happens if I switch this over to auto mode? What's going to happen is the radar is no longer going to be effectively slaved to my TDC. It is instead going to track the center position of the launch and steering target automatically. So if I were to turn away, and in fact, as you'll notice, as this guy moves across my view here, the center of the scan is going to follow him on the radar screen. So just bear that in mind that that is useful for maintaining a track on a target who is, you know, moving around. Let's go back to manual though, so we can pan this around. And let me, let me grab this guy as my launch and steering target. And I want to take a look at the EXP function down here. This stands for expand. So what does this do? It effectively just zooms the radar screen in on that target. Okay, it expands the battlefield so you can see targets that are a little bit more closely grouped together. Let's back out of there. Very similarly, however, still differently, we can use the RAID function. Now there's a HOTAS uh, function called the scan slash RAID slash FLIR FOV button that we can use. And if we hit that, or use this push button here, we are now in radar RAID mode. Now this looks like the radar beam is not moving, but it, in fact it is still moving. It is using what is described as radar magic to expand the battlefield out in front of us while keeping accurate tracks on all of these targets. So raid mode is useful for picking apart tightly grouped together targets. So like something like a very tight formation of enemy fighters that might be coming at you, you might want to split them up. You can do so by using the raid function. Let's back out of that now with another press of the raid FLIR FOV. And we're back into the main radar screen. So real basic. Just remember to keep in mind, you've got your launch and steering target denoted by the star. You've got your DT2 denoted by the smaller diamond inside the larger diamond, and you switch between them using the undesignate button. And the star should move along. Now with that said, let's look up at the HUD and see what we have. All right, let's, I'm going to just pause the whole sim here so we can see what this looks like without it all moving around on us. So. Our launch and steering target, as with all of our primary uh, targets, for even for STT and in LTWIS as well, is denoted by the target diamond. Diamond indicates hostile, as we've mentioned. Our DT2 is also displayed on the HUD. A little bit difficult to see here, but that X is our DT2. And if I were to come out an active pause here and do undesignate, I can switch that to be my active target. DT2 is now over there and back and forth, okay? So you can switch between those targets via the HUD as well. Now, I'm sure what everyone wants to see is the fact that we can launch multiple AMRAMs using this technology, so let's do so. I'm gonna unpause the sim here. I'm gonna turn towards our target over here. The nice thing about track wall scan is they are not getting a radar spike warning. All right, so we've got two targets in front of us. I'm gonna call Fox 3, undesignate to switch, and then Fox 3 again. And those two targets should die. And we've got a splash one, and our other guy here might have run away from us, so let's get him again. Oh, nope, it hit him. That's splash two. So we've launched multiple AMRAMs on two different targets using trackball scan. And you can do this to launch on um, as many targets as you want. What you need to do to do that is set your target as launch and steering, fire, switch to DT2, fire, designate a new launch and steering target, fire, and then rinse and repeat until you're either out of missiles or out of targets. Uh, it's a little bit unwieldy to do it on more than two targets at a time, but it is possible. Um, but yeah, the track wall scan mode is pretty good for that. So I highly recommend checking out uh, Chuck's guide for the track wall scan radar mode. 
It goes into much greater detail than I could cover in the video. But uh, get out there and practice with it, guys, and I will see you for the next video. So take care.